Hi, welcome back to my studio practice where this time around I'm going to try and paint using a reference photo uh, that is special to me because uh, this photo is one that was taken by my wife when we visited Monteverde a hummingbird garden in Costa Rica and there's a little beauty. Now what I've done is I've tried to scale it. So the picture was a different uh, different ratio but I've tried to scale it so that it should actually fit my canvas here. Uh, and so over at the palette cam in my mix I've got new water. So we're starting all over again. Uh, mixed with quite a lot of uh, water soluble linseed oil and I've noticed that it tends to go cloudy. So that's not anything that I should be worried about. And this mix is to match the mix that was used to prime this canvas. So here I've got cadmium yellow light here just above my brush. Here I've got carbon black and I've got some burnt umber. So I'm going to put my mix straight into my burnt umber. Uh, so the reason that um, I've tried to make this mix match the mix that was used to prime this canvas with a kind of um, sap uh, green is to maintain the fat over lean principle. So my mix for this painting normally, um, normally I'd be going in with a uh, uh, thinned, you no know, oil um, paint, just thinned with them. Um, they're thinner, and I'm being slightly put off by the noise from the neighbour, but never mind. Let's get this done. The beak is centrally placed, about there. It comes down, about there. It stops a little bit lower widens out here and we have a crown and a bib so the crown kind of roughly about here roughly about here yeah, it's quite an amusing picture because you know we've got these eyes offset either side of the beak like so uh, but still very beautiful because the bird itself has these amazing colors let me just try and match that. So, yeah, I think I could go wider still here, right there, and occupy a bit more of the canvas. And in that case, that can go wider. Like so. So yeah, we've got these big bulging eyes coming out. Uh, and we're basically looking up its nose because its beak is so <laughs> proudly pointing upwards. But the real charm of this is the blue and that lovely uh, purple color. There's a break in the feathers there, a little V-shape. And here, so that be higher, okay, roughly about there. Okay, and now the rest of it, how's that doing? It's actually okay, it's all right. Let's borrow some material from here. 
come down this side to create the body and here as well so the body extends further than the patterned uh, throat decoration or gorget does uh, and then there's a planar shift so it shifts off in this direction does a little bump back in itself and then fills out again about there let's take this up here now I'm tempted to do some editing because there is a strange little uh, stem that goes across here so I'm not actually sure about incorporating that or not I don't want to just follow the, the painting slavishly but if I have it just without it then um, uh, will it not just look like a little bit cartoonish that's my problem so there's a plane shift there a planar shift there changes direction comes back down we have this detail here and that should be it tone wise there is a dark patch coming right under that notch in the gorget fills out a little bit here and comes back to before the center and as well as that there's a mid-tone which forms a kind of teardrop shape here and again finds its way back almost to the center of the canvas so what I'm looking for here is a very very dark olive color so I understand that if I introduce yellow I'm not worried about the cleaning of the brush and the carbon black and the yellow creating a lovely green that I wish to warm with the raw umber yeah sorry burnt umber a little bit more of this so it's a kind of olive with a, a olive with a warm bias. Okay, so I'm happy with my sketch. It's not perfect. But what I'd like to do is be able to see this image more clearly. So I'm going to scale it up a bit more so that I can try to see some of the details. Okay. Yes, we have a very, very dark here. So more of the black in the mix here. Right where the eye is. And I notice that there's now a nick in the gorget round about there. So I'm going to come back here. A little bit more medium to help it flow. And there is a kind of swelling of the throat here in this area. Where the body 
comes back down in the pot itself there. So this should be quite dark here. And there's a dark bulge there. Let's see if I can go even darker by bringing in more of the carbon black. So we need to go even darker here. Make it bulge out a little bit more. To the eye. And really that should be all more or less blue. So there's a little correction that needs to be done there. So to help me see it, I am going to correct my drawing with my embossing tool. And I'm going to try and position the crown where it belongs. Here, slightly above the beak. And come out there. So that's that drawing connected. A little bit here as well. Make sure that that notch is pronounced. We want to be able to see it. And also that there is this kind of bulging, almost as if it's well fed. That's not how it happened, but that's how it appears. Okay, so I've corrected my drawing a little bit. We'll go back to the block in with my very darks towards the outside. There. And coming up here, some more medium to help it flow. So there's a kind of mid-tone coming in there. Back to my dark material there. And then it lightens up somewhat. More towards the yellow that we created. And similarly here, I can now see a triangle. And there's also a light patch here, which is even lighter than my mix has allowed for. So I will warm it up with yellow. And there's a little bare patch there, or a little balding patch there. Okay, I can now go back in with my darks. To fill in the void there. And there's a real dark here framing the gorget. There's a real dark there framing the throat on that side. I need to make sure that I don't go too far off symmetrical. But it's a very symmetrical photo and a very symmetrical view of what this hummingbird looks like. That should be much darker. Almost pure black. There we go. Nice sits in there. A slight hint of the side of the head where the gorget goes up. And more of the mustard colour here. And this is darker than that. Okay.
And so now what I'd like to do is switch over to this foliage and texture brush, which is a uh, Rosemary & Co. Tree and Texture. It's a Series 32 and it's 3 eighths of an inch. Make sure that it's dry on the surface. And what I'd like to do is begin to show. Begin to show that there are feather shapes. So all I'm doing is kind of pressing in the hope that the hairs will create a little print in the kind of um, deer foot uh, shape that it's presenting. Okay. And not too much rubbing because we don't want to blend that all in. We want um, there to be some separation of the colours. Right, some local colour. So the crown is blue. It's a very pale blue. So I think I can approach it with cerulean blue here. But that will need to be lightened considerably with titanium white. If you can find it. So titanium white and cerulean blue. Now the white's very strong, so we'll see what we can make with this. That's actually not far off already. So the white is adding chalkiness, which is what white does. Um, I notice the cerulean blue always in these paintings is um, is very very stubborn to mix. So I don't know if it's the formula. I don't know if it's the the um, uh, the fact that the paints I'm using are old. So I'm trying to use them all up before I commit to buying more paints, and then I'll buy more selectively. Okay, that's quite a nice blue. But I tend to think of things in threes, so like the blue, this is like the darkest value, then a mid value, and then a light value. So of all the values that I'm going to put on for this blue, this is going to be the darkest one. But this is just the block in at the moment, and I get a, a chance to correct my drawing. So what do I see? I see a nick there. And I see a brow ridge there, and a nick there. I see blue, beautiful blue. I may extend beyond my drawing to try and give a kind of fluffiness to the hair, a kind of shagginess. And if I overextend my original drawing, then I can always um, correct it when I go to shape the background. The umber is having a dampening effect on the blue. That is not unpleasant. I quite like it. Now, uh, I actually see that there's a little bit more green to that blue. So this is some viridian. And a lighter value can go in. 
with a greener bias. Not too light. But I can see that there's a kind of not green. Sort of brow ridges or little tufts I'm sure that the the head has a crown on it. Yeah. No, I am not 100% happy with that. I've lost some of the, the beauty of the blue. So maybe a darker version of that green. It's more like it. That's more like it. Okay, and just to show that it's there, I'll put a little highlight on the eyeball with what for at the moment the wrong colour, but it's in the ballpark. And there's another eyeball there, which is not so easily seen in the dark. But I'll put it in there for reference. Okay. I feel I need more dark. So back into the black. Not bothering to clean the brush. Not black enough. And so back into this area here. The eyeball is. And all these dark values on this side just need to be so much darker. Here. So this is almost going in with almost neat uh, black. So the chest here bulges out a little bit and throws the rest of the body into dark somewhat. And this dark mix is going to be good for this shadow area up here. That I'm now going to use my smushing brush again, Rosemary and Co. A limited edition brush for smushing. So hopefully, I can just while I have this color, I can use a kind of tapping motion, which I learned from my last painting, the Akakari, the um, yeah, kind of toucan. Bird. Now the brush is a little bit damp, so by tapping, I'm no longer applying paint, but actually moving it around or lifting it off, which is okay because that's allowing the green base to come through and create a colour that I hadn't mixed up and if I extend that there up into the this region and that makes that area more plausible a bit more of a fit for what is going on
And then similarly, with that lovely yellow, cadmium yellow light, I'm going to go more into the medium, more into the the pure parts of the yellow and see if I can scumble in some colours. Maybe I need slightly more yellow. Slightly stronger. And its own little dollop of white. I think that's a match there. So this will do. Uh, one of the nice things that I liked about this uh, as a photograph was the fact that the yellow, which is a bit more damp, dampened down yellow, need more white. Okay, that's better. Um, yellow and purple are going to be a great combination. So, okay, so I'll have to be a little bit more careful here with the smishing brush because it's got quite a large head for such a small area. But again, the same sort of thing, just stippling. And if any of the other colours get lost, well, we can reintroduce them again on successive layers. But my goal uh, at the moment in my painting is to try and get paintings done in as close to single sessions as I can manage. So trying to be a little bit more a la prima. It'll work. And so some of them, the initial green that I had has gotten lost a little bit. Okay, let's see how we're getting on. Okay, what happens if we lift out some of the material from here. We bring back some of the green that is underneath. And similarly here, and about this area. Can we get back to that lighter color? That mid green? Yes, we can. And similarly, up here in this corner where the black seems to have dominated a little bit too much. Bring back that green. But now we've lost a little bit of material. So let's reintroduce some pales here and some paler area here. And we should really have some pure white. For this, this little area here, it needs a particular light lighting effect. Okay. So, and this is a process that can be repeated endlessly. You just keep going, but uh, very useful for creating a soft focus background. We have a hair.
So nice soft focus. Perhaps not a perfect match uh, color wise, but it's not a goal. That's not the um, a thing that I'm trying to do. So to limit the palette, we've already got the blue, a cerulean blue hue. Uh, and to make our purple, well, we could go straight in with diox uh, purple, try and make it from there. But let's see if we can create some uh, coherence in the painting by using the blue that we've already had with perhaps a lovely magenta let's see how we go on with that pairing into the medium Okay, what I'm noticing is, uh, in mixing it this way, I have a variety of colours that make the purple effect, the overall purple, um, quite interesting. Okay, let's see how we go on. Just a block in at the moment. Just blocking in the colour. Now you can see a, a couple of areas of interest. Uh, down here, there's uh, a little ridge here and here, a little puffiness. Almost as if it's puffed out its cheeks a little. Okay, been a little bit creative with the colour, so it's not a pure mix by any means. Comes out and actually the throat should really extend down a little further than my drawing has allowed. Perhaps similarly at that side as well, just a little bit further down. Now, something that I notice about the feather pattern is that the gorget seems to be travelling in this direction. The marks seem to be going in a kind of horizontal manner. I'm just putting some in because, well, this is going to be the, the base of the, the gorget. Other colours will be added. I'm hoping this will be my darkest value, but I might change my mind. I'm change my mind quite a lot. So the throat goes in that a direction, whereas the crest seems to be going in very much a, a almost vertical. A slight angle out to the left and right corner, so in that direction, sort of radiating out from the middle of the beak. Yeah. Okay. So if nothing else, I've managed to achieve some uh, some blockins. And some suggestions of patterning. However, with my yellow, 
I can see that there's little patches here that are of interest. They should maybe be a little bit more green, but I'll just map them in just now with this kind of mustard colour. There is a kind of mustard colour takes over round about here, down in this direction, and behind that uh, stem it becomes a more solid block there. Okay. And the feathers need to be indicated a little bit more. There's a fairly bright green. So if I introduce the blue to the yellow, perhaps that blue isn't bright enough. It's a very, very muted green. Let's see how it shows up on the. It goes under the gorge out here. There's some greens coming in creating a little bit of sparkle yeah. more of the white here white and blue so let's see if we can bring in some detailing here and I can see some uh, Almost greying colors there. Some lighter patches on the shoulder to show that plain old shift. And then That yellow's been lost, it's gotten lost somehow. Let's take a flat. And bring this in, see if we can find that edge a little bit better. Similarly here on this side to try and improve it just a little. Make it a little bit more defined as the stippling seems to have lost some definition. Okay, and some artistic license going on now. Okay. Now I can see that my yellow against the yellow here, this is much, much more lime color. If I bring them side by side, it's a lot more lime. And the crown is lighter and a lot more green. But, uh, as a first pass on this painting, I would say that I'm fairly satisfied. Going into my black now to see if I can darken this beak. OK, 
Okay. And same mix. Slightly more medium because I felt it was a uh, a little bit stubborn. I didn't want to move for me. Let's get this eyeball placed. So the painting does seem to favour, the photograph does seem to favour uh, this side of the bird into light colour. So using my embossing tool as a painting tool, there's a suggestion of a highlight for the eye and the other one is almost entirely in the dark, so I better block that out because it can't really be seen. Let's see if we can tidy up the body. With that dark area, the dark area which is here. This shoulder. Coming under here. And any more. There's a slight dark there. That still allows the gorget to appear. So I think this part of the breast comes out a little bit more and then comes back upon itself. Okay, in terms of a first pass, I think that that's okay. It's not too bad. Uh, I thank you for uh, being with me and for watching this. I hope that you found something of interest in the way that I go about uh, my paintings. Um, I hope you find something of interest and that it inspires you to explore creativity uh, wherever you may be. Thanks for watching this one. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.